My name is Ahmed Hamid, and I am with Elham Rahimi and Thomas Givens, and we are a part of the Discrete Element Analysis Method team. Over the course of this presentation, we will be going over the background of the DEM method, providing a general overview of what DEM is before we provide an analytical perspective of the method. Thomas will provide some historical background of the method, such as who is the primary founder of DEM and why they decided to create this method. Elham will discuss the pr general principles and the governing principles of the DEM method, which will streamline us as we provide a hand-calculated example of implementing the method through Newton's pendulum. A numerical example using MATLAB will also be explained, and the numerous industrial applications of DEM will be provided at the end of the presentation. DEM, which is the distinct or discrete element method, is a way of stimulating discrete matter. Thus, every particle is considered individually rather than an entity where we have a group of particles. This can be seen by the graphic above, where we have individual particles interacting with one another and considering how they interact as opposed to them as a group. Typically, the method is also used to describe disks and spheres, particles which are symmetrical and have a rigid structure. Thus, we see this method being used to describe the interactions in granular ma materials and geomaterials and how they act within the bulk. The particles being described in DM should not also not be deformed, which can be seen in realistic scenarios. As stated, the method is not necessarily to describe the deformation of a continuum or structure as we will be describing shortly. Similar to DEM are the finite element method, FEM, and the smooth particle hydrodynamics method, SPH. The finite element method considers these particles as part of a continuum and is a suitable method for describing the deformation of a continuum that DEM lacks the cap capability of doing. As shown by the left graphic, FEM would be able to describe the interaction of the car with the wall and the type of damage it would face based on the different parameters such as the angle, the velocity, and the weight of the car when it impacts the wall. DEM would not be the right technique for describing that interaction, but the two do have similarities as they look at the interaction of the particles, but in different ways as we will discuss soon. As for SPH, the method is also well versed in tackling scenarios where deformations could occur as the deformed particles would be considered and lead to an entity known as a continuum body. SPH does not require that each element or particle is defined, but only a subset of particles is necessary to define the continuum body. The figure to the right shows two ways of describing the continuum body, where a mesh grid can be used as shown by the left figure, or a collective set of particles as con are configured to describe the body as shown by the right. Furthermore, the comparison between continuum and discrete models is shown below. The figure to the left showcases the difference between a continuum and discrete model as a grid of particles. The discrete model considers the particles and coordinates them as a grid, while the continuum body model considers the particles as part of the continuum body. While the particles in the continuum are in the same orientation as the discrete model, they are considered as part of the body and are placed within the box. The figure to the right shows the comparison of the two models to describe the interaction of salt in an environment with suspended charged particles. The discrete model considers how each individual cation and anion would interact in this confined space as each one could have a different interaction based on the position and its fellow neighbor. The continuum model considers these cations and anions as part of an entity and will consider how the entity, how the entire entity will interact. This can be done through inspection, expansions or contractions within the space just as an example. As previously stated, DEM is a model that handles discrete matter. Thus, the model is very effective in handling scenarios which handles particle flow, mixing, or packing, as each individual particle would be considered as well as its interactions. A clear application of this is the grinding and mixing of certain particulars to form a, ho a homo homogeneous mixture. Additionally, the method adds another level of detail by studying the interactions that are not necessarily noticeable when doing a physical experiment. An example of this would be related to mixing as well. While you could see the entire mixture being mixed, you wouldn't be able to see how every particle interacts. It would not be evident as to how the particles at the sides of the walls would interact compared to those in the middle. 
While there are obvious factors to consider, such as speed, it would be difficult by, by eye to notice how the particles are interacting in the middle and the bottom layers, which we might not be able to see visibly. With DEM, there are also some disadvantages. An obvious one would be the computing power needed to run the method. The method requires a large number of particles to be considered effective and to consider how each one of them interacts over a time range at specific time intervals can require a lot of time and computing power depending on the specific scenario that's being studied. As I just men mentioned, large data sets are necessary for this to be effective to understand all of these interactions between particles. Simple applications can be considered, as we will discuss later on, but for industrial applications, a large data set is necessary and it can be challenging for some to acquire a data set of that size. Also, the method does not handle complex deformations of particles, which leads to the use of FEM and SPH as mentioned before. The other two methods are capable of handling deformations in different ways, but both consider the use of continuum body. DM handles discrete matter and considers each particle individually rather than an entity. Next, Thomas will be talking about the history of the method. Until 1985, the development of the discrete element method was dominated by the work of Peter Kundal, which is pictured in the figure up here in the top right. Um, thereafter, it had been refined and translated a number of times. Um, to go through the timeline, Kundal developed DEM to assist with modeling of rock mechanics in his 1971 thesis, actually. In 1974, he translated the method into an RBM code, um, and later in 1978, he translated it into a Fortran code. In 1985, Kendall and Hart co-developed codes to perform DEM in three dimensions, which is a big step. And in 1985 as well, Williams and Masto generalized the method, comparing it to finite element analysis. Um, in 1992, she developed discontinuous deformation analysis, which is a very similar method. Um, and you can see this image of Peter Kendall on the top right, which has been repeatedly um, disintegrating, has uh, been formed using discrete element analysis, displaying granular flow um, after dropping the um, particles that would make up his face. Kendall's initial models involved the geomechanics of granular media and blocky materials. Um, these models were limited greatly in scale due to the computing potential of the day, and, and hand-calculated analyses um, were limited by the sheer amount of time and organization they took to compute. Later, the method would be developed to couple with um, and incorporate continuum mechanics, poor mechanical complexity, um, and a more diverse suite of shapes and particle interactions. Eventually, a number of industries de um, independently developed software incorporating DEM in order to model industrial processes for the development of techniques and equipment. Um, in addition, DEM modeling allows for quality control and the development of safety requirements and minimum specifications for safe use of um, various equipment. Um, so these industries are creating their own codes um, or codes that incorporate DEM um, and some of the industries um, that are relevant are agriculture, food transport, the pharmaceutical industry, um, many applications for civil engineering, powder, metallurgy, um, and tons of applications for chemical engineering. The discrete element method is a numerical technique that calculates the interaction of a large number of particles. For particle flow simulation, this method calculates defined displacements and rotation of discrete bodies of various types of particle shapes, which can be predicted through the gathering of assembled particles. Particles are simulated through solving the Newton's second law of motion and rigid body dynamic equation, or the force displacement laws combined with specific time stepping algorithm. For Newton's second law of motion, it means in an uh, inertial frame of reference, the vector sum of the force F on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration of an object. And the well-known equation F 
equals to m multiplied by a will shows up. So following the second rule uh, for the force displacement law, it depends on the models that are designed for the smooth particles of the irregular rounded shape and they provided by first displacement laws that account for both normal and tangential interactions and also for their own inertial shapes combined with specific time stepping algorithm. So assume here we have uh, the stiffness and friction as the force displacement law and by if affecting with the first boundary conditions. So directly effect on the Newton's second law of motion. That means make the moving of the object become possible and pass effects from the Newton's second law of motion. And it will affect on the force displacement laws by the displacement or velocity boundary conditions. Here, we divided mass of objects as hard and soft spheres. Just a quick comparison of these two methods. Um, soft spheres method is more realistic and accurate compared to hard spheres for three quick reasons. First, the soft spheres, uh, smaller overlaps between particles are allowed Second, forces are evaluated correctly. And third, simultaneous contacts are possible. So that makes soft sphere more desirable and most common method for uh, simulation for DEM methods. The simple example of a DEM model is Newton's pendulum model, which describes how a pendulum and how the individual particles interact based on some predetermined settings. Some of the things to consider with this example is that each particle was tracked, as shown by the different kinetic energy lines formed from this model, and a short snippet of how this was developed will be shown soon to show how the pendulum and the particles interact with one another over time. The Verla integration was applied for the model as is typically used to calculate the trajectories of the part particles in motion based on Newton's equations of motion. On the left is the MATLAB code used to develop the pendulum model with the short video clip shown to the right. As you can see here, we did determine the simulation time, the amount of time steps, as well as the domain um, of the simulation. Um, the way that this model works is naturally the it would take 100 data uh, steps over the course of the time, save them to a file, and thus we use a separate, uh, a separate function in order to plot the graphs that you see on the right. I will now be playing the figure of the code in action to show how the particles are interacting with one another. As I play the video clip, you will notice that the furthest ball of the five pendulum um, eventually hits the first of the other four, four balls in the pendulum, which causes the ball at the other end to bounce off, as you can see on the right side. However, it also bounces off the next most ripe ball slightly, with less kinetic energy in that ball, compared to the furthest right ball, um, which is why we see these two uh, lines here, as you can see. Um, once the furthest right ball impacts, it hits with less force, um, causing the pendulum to lose momentum. And as we notice when I replay this clip here, once this ball hits here and then the next two um, bounce off, um, the next three balls actually um, hit back with less momentum, especially the middle ball, and eventually the pendulum loses momentum, as we were just about to see, and it actually approaches um, a steady state. Uh, this video clip does not show in full, but shown by the decreased amount in kinetic energy and potential energy and the total energy, it would reach a point of steady state and return to a flat position. So whenever it comes to picking a software for a project involving discrete element analysis, there are many choices and each has their own advantages and disadvantages. The main distinction is the price of the code, which varies greatly between free for open source codes up to tens of thousands for commercial and specialized software. 
Open source codes are largely run within the terminal using commands and user generated scripts and are largely simpler programs with more limited capabilities. Commercial codes are usually more specialized or complex um, and they allow for the coupling of methods and are often accompanied by a graphical user interface. The code utilized for our numerical example of DEM analysis is YADE, which stands for Yet Another Dynamic Engine. YADE is an open source software compatible with Linux and it's written in the C++ and Python languages. Um, it came about as a collaborative effort between several European researchers from different backgrounds. Um, their diverse expertise has resulted in a code that could be adapted for many purposes. To visualize a numerically simulated DEM analysis, I'm going to walk us through a code um, that sets up a simulation that generates a number of randomly sized spheres within a bounding box, and then allows them to deposit or settle under the influence of gravity. Yade operates by moving sequentially through what the designer call, designers call a simulation loop. Um, this loop is understandably reminiscent of the standard workflow for a DEM analysis. Beginning with the establishment of bodies in the simulation, steps are followed that reset forces on the bodies from the previous step, um, approximate collision detection, um, detect exact collisions of bodies and update interactions as necessary, um, solve interactions by applying forces on the bodies, and apply other external conditions such as gravity, change in position, um, and then they change the position of the bodies based on the forces by integrating motion equations, um, and also updates the velocity based on those same motion equations um, from the forces. And then it performs any additional steps such as data recording, and then increments the time step at the very end by delta t, and then begins the simulation loop again. Um, this is repeated until an exit criterion that is defined in the code. Um, so shown here is the code used to define the simulation that I'll be showing you in the next few slides. Um, we begin by importing relevant modules, in this case modules to pack a space with objects and one to plot results. Um, a module um, function is called to generate a box bounding the simulation. Next, the pack module is called to define the geometry where the particles will be inserted and the particle size is randomized around a mean, then they're inserted into the simulation. Next, the engines are loaded in that perform the standard simulation loop processes described in the previous slide, specifying the types of interactions that occur between the spheres and facets, which are the walls of the simulation. Um, here, two Python scripts are also called that check the unbalanced forces and add data to the plot at particular frequencies. Um, delta T is also specified in this part of the code. Here at the top right box, we continue with the code by enabling the tracking of energy types, which will be plotted when we run our simulation. We define the condition that halts the simulation, and that's based on this unbalanced force that we're telling it to track. If the minimum threshold of 0.05 is met on that variable, the uh, simulation loop will be halted. Um, the next few lines define plot properties and variable names and displays the plot showing um, energy types and unbalanced force. So here we see the visualized result of the simulation, as well as a dynamic plot of the data we recorded. The spheres are released from stasis, fall, collide, bounce, shift, and finally settle. Um, the simulation ends shortly after the majority of the movement that can be easily perceived dies down, meaning our unbalanced force criterion was met and the simulation was halted. Here I'll play the simulation for you one more time.
Here I'm replaying the dynamic plot of our recorded data values, which, if you remember, were the standard suite of energies recorded by Yade and our unbalanced force variable. Um, I've not found an elegant explanation for the initial spike in unbalanced force, but I believe it's an instability caused by the starting of the simulation. Um, Beyond that, we see growth in the unbalanced force as the spheres begin to collide with each other and the facets. Um, this peaks just before all of the balls have stopped bouncing, and the unbalanced force slowly decreases until everything is nearly settled. Um, the displayed curves for the various forms of energy follow expected behavior with an initial increase and then loss of kinetic energy um, and a decaying increase in work done by gravity in the negative direction and a early increase in the um, non-viscous dampening and then plastic dissipation. So far, we learned about the historical background of discrete element method, um, principles and governing equations uh, for solving problems using the DM approach. So it can be expected a wide spectrum of DM application in various industries, um, such as geotechnical engineering, um, mining, civil engineering, oil and gas, mineral processing, and so many other applications. So in the following uh, slides, we went through a few examples of DEM applications together uh, to gain a better understanding of how these methods works. A discrete element method will embody an efficient algorithm for detecting and classifying contacts. It will maintain a data structure and memory allocation scheme that handle many discontinuities and contacts. There are many applications of DEM method in geotechnical engineering, which one of them could be multi-tunnel stress analysis and support system design. In this uh, mini project that we developed on the nice formation with the elastic, uh, uh, with the elastic analysis, so stresses are shown in corner that have small increases by decreasing the value of K. Um, however, like in plastic analysis, uh, different um, stress distribution will be provided. But just to compare different parameters of the rock uh, mechanics in the global system and how the, uh, and how the same or similar uh, tunneling like multi-tunneling uh, in underground will show us the stress distribution and provide the opportunity for designing a support system. So here we developed a design system by rock vaulting in the areas that we have higher uh, stresses to, uh, to uh, keep the tunnel in a stable uh, condition. So similar analysis, uh, but in a different uh, rock formation, uh, like in a mica schist, uh, that could be easily understand that uh, rock masses with mica schist formation stresses are higher since the stresses of uh, rock is less than nice formation. So in this Elastic analysis stresses are shown in nearly uniform distribution all around the tunnel and higher in sidewalls and floor and much less in corners and ceiling. So we developed a support system design as the uniform rock vaulting all around the tunnel uh, to make the mm, tunnels in a stable condition. Another example in geotechnical engineering is the stress distribution around the water tunnel. Um, it is very important to employ uh, the real situation of the um, water tunnel when we uh, flow the uh, high pressure water inside the tunnel 
So using the RS2 uh, software in the rock science package that you develop all these simulation and analysis provides the opportunity to see the uh, stresses around the uh, water tunnel and uh, develop a real analysis for the elemental uh, for the elemental of the stress distribution around this tunnel. So another application of GEM is uh, in very deep mining and rock mechanic analysis. In another mini project of the Kyrona sublevel mining, uh, we developed the sublevel mining for more than 2,000 meter underground. Um, on the right side uh, is the global model for the uh, mine design and uh, extraction. And on the left side, you can see the global model for the uniform stress distribution uh, according to the gravity. So this area is our interest to develop our analysis of GEM and see uh, the interaction between the stresses for the drift and sublevel mining. In this figure, um, we develop the stress distribution around the drift uh, in the level of 2000 meter deep without considering the sublevel mining. So here we see uh, the area that has higher stresses. So that will help us for the uh, sublevel mining. We will provide the safe area between the drift and the sublevel mining. In this graph, uh, in this figure, uh, we can see the first level of sublevel mining and the tunnel. Uh, so the distribution of the around the tunnel and the first uh, level of sublevel of mining will be like this, which will be intensified and increases as this level are moving downward uh, to the uh, drift. So we see a higher, uh, like higher values of uh, stresses around the tunnel, which these stresses will decreases as the sublevels going downward. And in the like the fifth level, we see that these stresses around the drift are much less and more safer. So maybe in this condition, we don't need to uh, provide any support uh, system design. More examples on DM application in geomechanic engineering could be see here and to employ the triaxial shearing. So further examples of DEM application um, are in civil engineering. We can see in this short video how the concrete is built, like the material including sand and gravel in the beginning are mixing together, then cement is added and after that, water starts to add to this mixture. And after the specific time that the desired parameters of the cement are achieved, uh, we can keep track of um, the time and the desired uh, parameters are our cement using the DEM um, method. And last but not the least example of DEM application uh, is optimized shoot design. Uh, we see all the uh, gravels or particles that are falling apart of this shoot, um, how, these, uh, how their speed by time are changing to a stable condition going from one level to another level. Here are some citations that we use in our project and uh, all the links for the YouTube videos are provided beneath each uh, slide. Um, at the end, thank you very much for your attention and uh, spend time with us. 
uh, we would be happy to answer any question. Thank you.